welcome to St. Stephen's to our online service. As we come to record this a couple of days before you see it, uh, news has just come out about all the changes of restrictions. And I think we're all aware that um, there, are, there are changes afoot and difficult decisions being made. And it just increases the uncertainty for all of us. And uh, I, I just bless you wherever you are, if you're feeling really anxious about this. And, and I just pray that you might find somebody who to talk to or pray with you or so that somehow together, even though we're separated, we can hold each other up as we go through this really strange time. And those around us um, who are not within our church. Um, this week, uh, Lisa went to food bank with um, the supplies and she uh, took a little video of Hannah who organizes food bank for the region. And we'll see that um, before our service starts. Um, we have uh, Archdeacon Karen with us uh, preaching um, and she will have also been uh, with the congregation at nine o'clock this morning celebrating communion. It's really lovely to have her with us. She, she would have been um, with us this Sunday um, and she, she would, would have been um, looking at whether we were keeping our records correctly as well as being with us and encouraging us and talking with us. And, and that'll, ha that'll happen probably this time next year. And there's an update from Claire um, about her work, which we thought she would be interested in. A really big thank you from us at Norwich Food Bank for all of your support. We know you've helped us out over the years and this is really brilliant. Things are really challenging for us at the moment, but we really do appreciate your continued prayers and your contribution. So thank you very much indeed. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. We will. 
we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey, just a really quick update to thank God for everything he's doing with the community work and the little projects that he's um, allowed me to be involved in in people's lives. A Lithuanian man got his passport. Praise God, after lots of, well, years, in fact, of not having one. A young gentleman who has been in and out of prison and struggling a little bit with addiction to drugs over the years has abstained now for several months and just moved into his own room in supported accommodation. Um, I've been doing a little bit of gardening this week and that's just to help support a lady who's getting back on her feet. She's got a history of homelessness and complex mental health. So we're just helping her get her garden because it's just got massively overgrown. And on top of this, like on top of the work that I'm doing at St. Stephen's, I've also got a housing project on the go. We're looking to have a house very soon where we can actually um, have individuals who you know have been homeless who want to detox from drugs or alcohol and yeah get free from addiction that's a long-term project so hope everyone's well sending lots of blessings bye and so our prayer for today faithful lord whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end Grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites! Why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So? Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our gospel passage today has to be one of the most misapplied in the Bible. Those who would prefer the church not to interfere in matters of government and civil society will often use it to quote Jesus out of context. They use that sentence, 
give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. They use it to claim that this means religion is a private preference and has nothing at all to do with the way we run the country, operate our businesses or interact with our physical environment. By all means, go to church for an hour on Sundays, but don't let it interfere with whatever else you do. Really? Is that what Jesus meant? I don't think so. At this point in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is up to his neck in political interference. The temple was a highly public and symbolic place in which Jesus had challenged the commercial model in operation, the exploitation of the poor, the culture of deference and entitlement that kept in power those with money or status. And when those he is challenging set him a trap, asking him a question that, though it sounds sycophantic, actually conceals some hidden pitfalls, he sees right through it. And he calls them hypocrites. He can't really get much more political than that. The question assumed that a choice had to be made between God and the emperor, and that whether or not you paid taxes signified the choice you had made. If you paid taxes, you were acknowledging the emperor and by implication rejecting God. If you didn't, you were choosing God over the emperor, but risking your life. Jesus rejected that framing of the question. Instead, he takes a coin and exposes just how trivial it is, a little piece of metal with a picture of a human being on it. What power does that have against God? In his pronouncement, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, it's as if he's saying, this tiny token, this is nothing compared with the abundant riches of God. Get your priorities right. See the bigger picture. Where is your heart? Is that God's or the emperor's? If we give our heart to God, then God's love invades and empowers every aspect of our lives. It flows out in our relationships, our decisions, and our attitudes to work and money. Some things we may have no control over. If the law tells us to pay taxes, we pay taxes. But that doesn't inhibit us from asking questions about the funding, uh, the priorities that are funded by those taxes or seeking to use our voices and our votes to continue that outflow of God's love into all areas of our common life. I think Jesus' response serves also as a warning against single-issue politics or single-issue religion. The Pharisees presented the question of taxes as the touchstone for determining whether a person was on God's side or not. What issues might we do that with today? You might think of abortion law, same-sex marriage, immigration, human rights, environment. Even mask wearing in some circles is controversial with people accusing each other of failing to trust in God or failing to love their neighbours. And on each of these issues, we may come to different conclusions. But the deepest question is, who does your heart belong to? Do you take these questions to Jesus in a spirit of openness, humility and service? If so, then let's learn to respect and remain in fellowship with others who do the same, even though they might reach different conclusions. Together, let us gather at the feet of our Lord and Saviour.
receiving his love and seeking to share that wherever we can. And so we have a time to reflect on, on what Karen has said to us. Uh, Megan will be singing, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed.
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father God, as we pray, open our ears so that we may listen to you. Open our hearts so that we may receive your love and compassion, and help us to show love to all around us. Lord, we pray for the church around the world. We thank you that we're continually seeing people learn about you and choosing to follow you. Protect and be with those who are being persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, thank you for your amazing creation. Help us look beyond our needs and to the needs of the world around us. Show us what we can do to protect your creation and fight climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mother God, we pray for everyone who is being affected by COVID-19. We pray for wisdom for our leaders, strength for our frontline and key workers, and comfort for those who are isolated or have lost loved ones. We also thank you for the fellowship that has risen out of this situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment to think of those who are in pain, who are sick, who are lonely, who are weary, and those who mourn. We pray for God's comfort and love to surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the week we have just had. We thank you for the, all the good things that have happened to us, big and small. As we look to the week ahead, we pray that we take time to reflect on your word and make space to praise you in everything that we do. Thank you for your never-ending and abundant love for us. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this word was sent to me um, a week or so ago. It, it's very much uh, about our present time. Um, and, and I hope that you find it really encouraging. This is what the person said. In this time, there is an opportunity to lean on God. The verse from Song of Songs, which is chapter eight, verse five, came to mind. Who is this coming up from the wilderness 
leading, leaning on her beloved. I saw that it was said about us after this time, as we come out of this season into the next. Who is that coming out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? He brings good and uses every situation for our good and his glory. Then I thought of two verses from Hosea, chapter 2, 14 and 15. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. There I will give her back her vineyards and I will make the valley of Accor trouble, a door of hope. This is God's promise for us that in the wilderness, as we learn to lean on him even more, he will speak tenderly to us give us what he has for us and turn our troubles into hope. It, it's who he is and it's what he does. And as you walk out of the wilderness, which eventually we all will do, we will be leaning on him and people won't recognize us because we will have changed more into more of his likeness and then a separate few words wake up rest in me i give you sleep and rest you don't need the help of other distractions to get you to sleep. Wake up from your distractions and find true rest in me. Lots to think about. Uh, we are, have been experimenting with showing the online service physically in church at 10 o'clock. And we can, with extra wires and gizmos, we can now do that um, and we will be doing that next week we will be limited of course by our physical space so in order to socially distance uh, we will be limited to 40 people um, which is uh, and after that uh, we will open so at a quarter to 11 11 o'clock we will open the cafe for one hour um, Payment will be uh, by putting the right money into the or money into the churn, so we won't be uh, opening up that part of the cafe. But it will be open to you and the public for an hour. And as we move from the service to being a cafe, you will then need to gather in groups of no more than six during that time. This will be an experiment. We, we just need to do all these things, keeping each other as safe as possible. But if it's possible, it will be a delight to see um, each other, uh, or at least some of us will be able to see some of us um, in real life. And that will be a delight. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Yeah.